Bill McGurn is up next on this China Vatican Pact. But first, a little news to share with you. The United States said they are ready to continue their denuclearization talks with North Korea. And the negotiations will be completed by January of 2021. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made the announcement on Wednesday after another round of successful peace talks between the leaders of North and South Korea concluded this week. After those talks, South Korean President Moon Jae-in vouched for the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, saying that he has again and again affirmed his commitment to denuclearization. Moon is facing pressure from Washington to find a path forward in an effort to get Kim to completely and unilaterally abandon his nuclear arsenal. However, Kim has stated that he would only dismantle North Korea's main nuclear facility if the United States acts in kind. Joining me now is former speechwriter for George W. Bush and columnist at the Wall Street Journal, Bill McGurn. Bill, thanks for being here. Ah, you're welcome. Uh, I need to get into this. Last week, it was reported that the Holy See and China are scheduled to sign an agreement in Beijing concerning the nomination of bishops sometime at the end of September and before October. According to reports, the Vatican has agreed to recognize seven Chinese priests who have been excommunicated by Rome for acting as bishops without Vatican approval. The Vatican is prepared to accept them as bishops. Meanwhile, two actual loyal bishops who have remained faithful to Rome all along will retire to make room for prelates more acceptable to President Xi. In exchange, China promises to officially recognize the Pope as head of the Catholic Church in China. Bill, what does the Vatican hope to get out of a deal like this? I don't know. I, the only argument they can make, China is in the middle of a crackdown on Christian, on all religions, frankly, right. the Muslims and so forth, um, on all of them. And uh, the only argument for this is that it's going to get bad. This is the best deal we could cut in bad circumstances to try to preserve something. But, you know, they shut out anyone that knows anything about China. I lived in Hong Kong, as mm -hmm. you know, for yes. almost 10 years. And uh, Cardinal Zen there is, is a person who's dealt with the Chinese, worked yes. with the seminary in Shanghai and they completely froze him out. It's amazing. As part of the scheme, and we're going to get to Cardinal Zen in a moment, uh, Bill, the last time I spoke with him, I'll share some of his insights. I want your reaction now knowing what we know. Uh, as part of this scheme, a Communist Party panel would choose the bishops, and then the Pope would have veto power. Here is Cardinal Zen of Hong Kong, who is adamantly opposed to this deal. When we spoke last March, I asked him how the selection of bishops might work under the deal. Here's what he said. They say, oh, the, the authority of the Pope is saved because the last word still belongs to the Pope. But <laughs> the, the, the problem is, what can be the last word? Uh -huh. huh? uh, uh, how the Pope can approve people chosen by the government, but now they choose with any consideration of uh, the likings of the Holy See. Because mm. in this moment, there's no agreement, but there is compromise. And they still pay attention to what, uh, you know, uh, are the choices of the Holy See. But when you give them the power in their hands, they use it fully. And so mm. they make uh, their, their own choice. And the Pope can only veto. But right. I ask how many times he can veto. How many times? He may be embarrassed to, to, to veto uh, for 10 times. They say, uh, we, we uh, consider the, the reasons for this veto. Uh, if we find it unreasonable, we, we go on our way. Bill, how do you see this plan working in reality? Well, you know, the uh, Wall Street Journal had an editorial said, imagine if Donald Trump demanded the right to choose the candidates who would become bishops mm. in the Catholic Church in America. Would say this is ridiculous, right? Mm. Uh, and is it any more sensible to give this to an atheistic communist regime? Remember that in China, they want control. They have, it's not the patriotic association, you know, the official state-run church. Right. It's the Bureau of Religious Affairs, which is atheistic, and they want to control religion. It, it's just, it makes no sense. Also, China has no incentive to fill a seat. Say the Pope vetoes someone 10 times. What does China care? It goes un unfilled. They don't like religion anyway. So it, it's just a terrible, mm. it's a terrible surrender. It's been a hard-fought battle over the centuries. 
for the church to get the right to name bishops, its own right. bishops and its own integrity. And uh, to give it away uh, for this, I think, is really, really foolish. Uh, defenders of this action, Bill, say, now wait a minute, there's predicate here. It's happened in Vietnam. It happened back in the French, with the French crown, where they were allowed to pick bishops and submit them to Rome. Um, wh what do you say to that? I think, look, we've been trying to move away from that. It makes no sense to do this. There's no reason to do it. Why would you do it now? You're going to split the church as uh, you're going to recognize a schismatic church, the Patriotic Association, leave these other people out on the lurch. Look, it's true that the distinction between the so-called underground church and the Patriotic Church is not the quite the bright red line that some people think in America. Mm -hmm. It's been really eroded. Many of the people, the bishops in the Patriotic Association, have been secretly reconciled with Rome. So it's a right. much, it's a much more gray area. But you don't give them the recognition. It's just, and look, it tells you something that this is all done by the Italians at the Vatican, right? Mm. They specifically excluded anyone like Cardinal Zen That's who has right. dealt with the Chinese communist and knows how to. Imagine, imagine if people um, kind of concluded this kind of deal when John Paul was in Poland. I mean, it's, it just beggars belief. Right, no, it really does. And, and what do you make of the fact that now we know Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was one of the, the emissaries right. for the Pope on this. I mean, does that taint this deal and the, and the way it was crafted? I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Cardinal McCarrick. You know, I had my own run-in on China with him. Mm. When I was in the White House, I proposed a meeting between President Bush and Cardinal Zen, and a lot of people fought that meeting, and apparently one of them who fought it in a very sneaky way was Cardinal McCarrick. Mm. But I don't think we can blame This is the Pope's deal. It's the Pope's people. Mm -hmm. um, he pursued this deal. Uh, I mean, the only thing we hope is that the Chinese get too greedy and, and don't go for it. Because I think what the Pope's after is a restoration of diplomatic relations and a papal trip. Yeah. But it, it's going to come at a terrible price. You know, Raymond, let me give you a story. When I first yeah. went to China in the 80s, I went to Mass at, I think it's St. Ignatius in Shanghai, Old Church, mm -hmm. and I believe they were still doing the Latin Mass because, you know, they didn't, they didn't recognize Vatican II yeah. until much later, right? So I'm watching this, and ahead of me, two pews ahead of me, was this very old lady, and she's wearing sandals, and you could see tire treads on the back because they were taken from old tire, tires. Mm. And I was feeling sorry for her, thinking this poor old woman, mm. um, what she's been through for her faith. Then I thought, don't feel sorry for this woman. She won. She's still here. Mm -hmm. She's still faithful. This deal is such an affront to people like that. Yeah. Bill, earlier this month, the AP reported that uh, Chinese authorities are burning Bibles and crosses. It's illegal to post prayers or catechesis online. They're forcing Christians to renounce their faith. We know several churches have been destroyed this year in China, including a mega church in the last month. Given all of this, can the Chinese government be trusted to keep any deal they make with the Vatican? No, the Chinese can't be trusted to take anything. They, um, they don't keep their word. They have a record of not keeping their word. Look, it's not just Catholics, as, as you point out. Mm -hmm. It's other Christian groups, and it's, it's Muslims and Buddhists. Um, well, there's a million Muslims worry about in, the in, Dalai in an internment Lama. camp. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a total crackdown. They want control. The irony is they like to present... Uh, Catholicism and Christianity as a Western import. But Christianity has actually been in China in different forms since the 7th or 8th century, right? It's communism that is the biggest Western import um, China's have. So these people that are, you know, cracking down on this as illegitimate, um, they have to take a look at Chinese history themselves. Mm -hmm. Could it be that the Vatican is seeing um, what we're talking about here and they're trying to make this deal. I mean, if you talk to people in the Vatican, as I have, they'll tell you they want to make a deal now before the situation gets worse, that they're not even looking to restore the diplomatic relations that were broken in 1951. Do you think that's credible? No, I don't. And uh, there's no reason for a deal now. There just isn't. You know, one of the history, one of the facts of history of the Catholic Church in China is making deals with dynasties and so forth right before they they fall, they you know, as the Jesuits tried to do. So I think we should let um, someday communism is going to fall, and I don't think this deal is going to look that good. I mean, the church mm. has made these kind of agreements before. 
I hate to make the comparison with Hitler and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, I don't think it's going to hold up well. And I think it's going to really demoralize a lot of people. You know, we don't even know what the full deal is. And my understanding is that even after they sign it, we're not going to know all the terms. Right. And They're I would like to, to know, for example, I'd like to know, for example, does it include the release of all Catholics and especially bishops and priests who have been incarcerated by this regime? I mean, this is the moment to get them out. Right. I, I just think it's, it, it, it's um, undercut some of the most faithful Catholics in the world who have undergone tremendously brutal treatment. In February, the Chinese government implemented a set of new regulations to control religion in China, and they included five transformations of the Catholic Patriotic Association. That's the official church in China. Right. Here they are, localizing religion, standardizing management or control over the appointment of bishops, indigenize theology, meaning to co contextualize it I in terms of communist China, and show financial transparency and adapt Christian teaching as to mold them into institutions that reflect the objectives of the Communist Party. Now, Bill, what impact will ideals like that have and realities like that have on the six million underground Catholics, which are about half the number yeah. of Catholics well, in, in China? Well, let's first talk about the reality of China as, as a woman uh, that I knew who's, who's quite elderly now, but has been one of the links between the Vatican and the church in China over the years told me, whatever you say about China and the church is true of some part of China. It really varies. In some places, there is really militant persecution. And in other places, the mayor's wife might be Catholic, and they, they, they let a lot go. China is very hypocritical. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of stuff on paper doesn't get turned in. But again, the Patriotic Association doesn't mean anything. They're trying to bring the Catholic Church under con the control of the Bureau of Religious Affairs uh, run by an atheist for an atheist government. And they, they, they want control. They don't want yeah. anything that they can't control. Yeah, and as people And if you tell give you. them control over the bishops, the personnel, given the importance of the bishops mm -hmm. in any Catholic structure, um, you know, you're creating a lot of lackeys. Uh, I, in my interview with Cardinal Zen, I asked him about these new government regulations and if the Vatican might be playing into the hands of the Chinese government. He said this. It's obvious, he says, because now they are giving the whole administration of the church into the hands of the so-called Patriotic Association, but which is just a puppet in the hands of the government. And so it's a complete surrender. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, he said what I was just saying when he said right. in the hands of the government, he means the Bureau of Religious Affairs. Mm -hmm. That's the real player here. The Patriotic Association doesn't really mean that much. They want control. Yeah. And that's what they're after. And unfortunately, I think that's what the, um, the Pope is giving them. It's, it's, it's just a terrible, terrible precedent. Bill, there are 101 bishops in China, 65 in the Patriotic Association, 36 underground. Those are bishops who have been loyal to Rome at great cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, it appears under this deal, they'll be forced into the Patriotic Association, into the arms right. and under the thumb of the government. How does this affect the long-suffering, loyal Catholics out there? I, I think it's terrible. Look, um, if you're, again, the underground isn't quite what people think here. It's not always mm -hmm. like the catacombs and dark. They, they, they might be just unofficially uh, recognized. But those people have put up with so much. And in the past, they would say, at least the pope is on my side. Mm. And now they have nowhere to go. The government is going to insist that they all come under the government-controlled church and they have no place to turn. It's going to be very, very demoralizing. Look, it was always going to be a challenge at some point to reconcile the people in the underground church and the people in the above ground church, right? It's, mm -hmm. It was always going to be a part. Part of it is generational. But this just poisons the well. This is going to make uh, for, for very bad things. And again, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to know if any Catholics in prison in China are going to be released on this. If the Vatican made this deal without that. I just, I just think it's unconscionable. Yeah, well, it would be, it would be maddening to do that. So at least right. free your own people if you're going to trade right. away all your this power. This is the moment, right, this is the moment you have the leverage, you know, when right. you're making the deal. They're not going to get more accommodating after. Hmm. In, in your great piece on this, which I, I put up on social media and I'll repost, uh, the Vatican's China Syndrome in the Wall Street Journal, you write that the Vatican may be joining an unfortunate list of Westerners 
who have claimed to have gotten a good deal with China, only to come to find out <laughs> they had been had. What do you think will await them? I mean, how do you see this playing out? I think it strengthens China's hands. It discredits Rome in the eyes of many Catholics, demoralizes them. I think it's going to be a mess and, and no clarity. And I don't see the church being strengthened by it in any shape or form. Also, I think the Vatican, this is one of the problems, and it's the problem with a lot of Western deals with China. Mm -hmm. The Vatican wanted a deal much more than China does, right? Oh, what does China okay. really care about mm -hmm. this? And so I think it was eager to trade whatever it had to trade mm. um, to do this. And they want control. Communist regimes are not about Marxism. Mm. Chi China sort of abandoned Marxism as an economic theory a while ago. They're not about Marxism. They're about Leninism, about control. Mm. And they don't like independent institutions that can challenge them. Finally, I need to talk about Brett Kavanaugh for a moment. Uh, I know okay. you knew him and his family. You know them. Right. What do you make of some of the pieces we've been seeing, even in the Catholic media? America Magazine had a piece talking about the toxic masculinity of, uh, of, of the, the school he went to, which was a Jesuit institution, and that he somehow embodies that. Your reaction? Right. Look, my reaction is, I don't know what went on in that room in Maryland. I don't even know if Brett Kavanaugh was there. He denies that he was there. There's no evidence for it yet. And it's amazing to me how this man is being smeared. I mean, when he appears Monday, I think he has to look at the Democratic senators and say, Senator, what do I need to do to clear my name so my children don't ask me, Daddy, did you try to rape someone? Mm -hmm. What can he do? That he should mm -hmm. put the challenge on them. This is his Clarence Thomas moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the America Magazine piece you mentioned was written by the president of Fordham Prep, mm -hmm. um, and, and it was very, I think it was very dishonest in the way it carefully avoided saying Brett Kavanaugh was guilty, but sort of slyly implied it all the time, mm -hmm. including in a headline, Brett Kavanaugh on Toxic Masculinity. I would like the president of Fordham Prep to write a story about toxic masculinity and one of its most prominent alums, Cardinal McCarrick. It's, mm. just, it's just so dishonest and very unchristian, I think, the way this man and his family have been treated. Bill McGurn, we'll leave it there. Thank you for being with us. Bill's column, Thank you. Main Street, appears each week in the Wall Street Journal at WSJ.com. It is always a worthy read.